Hi, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. There you go, that's me. <laughs> so um, it's late in the day and um, I had to go home and do some gardening all afternoon. But I'm back in the studio and I have to stand to remove this sink, which is a commission uh, with somebody's uh, schoolhouse painted in and uh, trees all around and one deer I'm going to paint a cat in it but this is the stencil removing part which I spent all day yesterday putting the stencils on and spraying color to get a base color and then I do all the hand painting after I take all the stencils off so here you go this might be interesting and my cat is asleep right behind me as you can see so let's see how we can do this so you can see uh, Maybe it should work over there. It's very difficult. Um, where's the part where you could see over here? Actually, let's move my light. I think you can see a little better over here. It's a little harder for me at this point. Can you see there? You go. That's better. Oops. So a tree. Yeah, it's been, um, I mean, we had a frost uh, yesterday morning and last night it was down really cold as well. So I've been doing a lot of gardening and of course covering things up at this point. But tonight it's uh, only supposed to go down to about 8 to 10 degrees uh, centigrade. So that is, um, we were up to about 17 today and we're supposed to go down to about 8 probably. Um, and uh, so I had plants outside, getting them accustomed to being outdoors. But it's a lot of work moving plants in and out. I posted a lot of uh, pictures of all the stuff on Facebook as well. So if you're all, also on Facebook, you can see a lot of the stuff I do on Facebook. Um, pottery as well as other things. How's everybody doing anyway? It's... Uh, COVID-19 declining numbers everywhere it looks except for in a few places in the States but um, we only had one case in like three days in a row now we've just had one new case and it's all in a retirement home in Halifax it's still like the same all over the world I think but we've, we've got to rethink retirement homes So as you see, you've got the different layers. The sinks like this are complicated because I actually paint up to five layers. So when I'm actually painting the, or spraying a color to get a base color in there, and then I put a stencil over it, after the third layer, it gets really thick and it's really hard to find your stencils. So what I do is I paint the color, put a paper stencil over the top, and then I'll sponge, after I've got all the stencils on for that layer, I will sponge a lot of the slip off before I spray the next layer of color. So it's quite time consuming. Um, and that way I can reduce the number of layers. The problem I found is the more layers you get, it, the harder it is to see um, your paper stencils. Um, so brown is layer one. Layer two is the dark green. Layer three is the like a middle green, I would say. And then I have a yellow. So we got one, two, three, four. And then of course the background color is five. So that's really a lot. Because you can, I won't touch it because it's wet at the moment. I have to be very careful doing this because if I drop one, it actually will actually spoil the whole thing. So hold your breath. It's uh, not a good thing to drink a lot of coffee when you're doing this. You need a gentle hand. And a good memory, because you've got to kind of know where you put things. Yeah, I noticed when I put my seedlings out today, some of the beans have been nibbled on by birds already. I'm just putting them outside the side door of the studio. Um, and 
and uh, when I went and did the gardening all afternoon, I mowed the grass, I weed whacked, I did everything, and um, and then we planted some radishes. I came back to the studio, and um, there's some beans being eaten already. So I've got what's called a fleece blanket. Uh, well, actually, I have a hundred hundred feet of a fleece blanket, um, and I'm going to put them in the garden and cover them with that and you can actually leave that on all the time. It's very thin and it helps keep plants a little warmer when they're in the garden. Let's light completely through. It looks white um, but it actually protects from birds and uh, insects. So a lot of things like cabbages, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, all those kind of things they you know they tend to get eaten by various things I think even pigeons and I have a lot of pigeons I think I may have shown you those in previous videos and if I point the camera outside the pigeons are there my cat doesn't go outside which is for that reason even though a lot of people hate pigeons I don't mind them the rain washes all their mess away because they do poop on my deck. Somewhere in all this there is a building and there'll be one deer. Is my arm in the way a lot of this time? This is an awkward process, very tedious. Putting the paper down, let's see if I can see there, I thought there was a little brown tree there again. I try to be logical about my positioning so I help myself with not having to remember every single stencil. Nope, this isn't going to be too boring. Half of you will be asleep by the time this one's over. This is good time, bedtime watching video. But I've not shown this type of decoration on any other videos. Uh, I've shown the cat prowlers and uh, I'm not sure if I showed any other animals but basically the animals are fairly simple to do. This one is hard because I have to cut these trees out as paper stencils and they're actually really difficult to cut. So I, this is an exacto blade that I'm using here. And that's what I used to cut out a lot of the stencils, just cutting with an exacto blade. I had a student who um, had a printer, a uh, laser printer, I think it was, or something, a cutter rather. Um, anyway, she tried cutting stencils using that, but they, always, they were done with paper that was way too thick, and, uh, and the, the stencils didn't work that great. Although they worked, I mean, they weren't terrible, but. But these pieces of paper are so thin, it's just newsprint, um, so it soaks down really easily. And, um, and it actually uh, bends to the form of the piece. If you get something that's a little bit too thick, you'll end up having creases. I don't see any creases here to show you in this one yet, but even with new this paper, it will crease occasionally. I've sort of lost where that what's in there. I think there's a tree there. No, I don't know. I can press the if I press in just a little bit at an angle, you can push the slit back down. I'm not quite sure what I'll have to skip that one for a bit. Sometimes it's better to come back at one. I've been of course with my seedlings I've been growing a lot of plant pots because I'm thinking this year because of tourism being down a lot they're calling it bubble tourism for Nova Scotia this year so the idea is they won't let anybody in and they won't let us out so um, so everybody's gonna stay at home for their uh, vacations and holidays and um, well, that's why it's a bubble and uh, so we're going to have a lot of people local which most tourist years, I don't make planters for the season because people cannot take plants across the border back to the States or on an airplane to go home. Um, and they, 
could take a planter that was empty, but this year I'm going to plant up a lot, and, and I have a, probably 150 basil plants. Um, uh, I was very successful in the germination. Um, I have grow lights, so I, I do it properly. And, um, but um, so I'm going to plant up a lot of plant pots and make it look really, really nice, but also really the smell of basil, of course will be really nice but I've got uh, the I'll photograph the front of the studio at some point and uh, actually I think you can just probably go on uh, Facebook there must be photographs of the front of the studio and you've seen it in the in the tour I did of the um, virtual tour in the gallery about a week ago and we decided to get rid of a whole bunch of tiles that we had on the front of the building that I did 10 maybe 15 years ago um, and they were commissions and I made extras but, um, but anyway they'd been on the building for a long time so I got rid of them aha here's the building and it's pulling up another tree I knew there was a tree in there so let's see if I can get that tree first if the paper rips, it's harder to tell what form it has. That they go. The building was making it, so I couldn't tell that where that uh, tree was. If you go on my uh, old website, which is westcobellpottery.com. Um, you'll see a whole bunch of pages on sinks and I've actually done a lot now I've got to be very careful here because it's a long stencil that's the roof line just move it around so I can reach over I can't touch the rim of the sink because it's wet I've actually painted this with a coat of colour my arm is killing me doing this because I'm holding it up for so long As potters, if you're watching this and you're a potter, shoulders and wrists and your back. And I've just about had all of those issues. I've actually resolved my back issue because I've made myself a special chair, um, which pushes me forward above the wheel a little bit when I'm throwing, so I don't have to bend my back as much. The back legs of the chair are longer than the front legs. And um, I've had carpal tunnel surgery on my wrists, both of them. And that was about uh, 12, 13 years ago, and it's never come back. I still don't have any more tingling. But holding things like this, little blade putting pressure on, is really hard on the those nerves. So I know there's a paper in there. There you go. Now you'll see the big house. So I have a lot of painting to do. After I've got this off, all these pieces of paper, I have to go in with a paintbrush and basically hand paint. See, I'm trying not to let any part of that piece of paper fall into the sink because it's wet and it will stick and leave a smudge. So I have to keep seeing what I'm pulling, carefully fold it, so it doesn't tear and break off, so I can lift the whole thing. There you go. So I've got a lot of, um, it's a base color that I'm doing, basically. So so I've got to, um, there you go. And I didn't do one of those on there. I'm going to paint that one in. And there's also, it's a schoolhouse, so there's another piece up here somewhere. Try to keep my videos short, so I'm trying to get this all done within half an hour. But paper removing is really time consuming. And there's another piece of paper under there. If I remember right, just a tiny piece. So doing little bits of clay, you've got to be really careful if you're doing little pieces of paper. So I'm going to be painting that whole thing again, putting in clapboard and and all the rest of it. The doorway will have some 
something in the interior of the building painted in there as well. There'll be a little yellow cat sitting in front of this house because she'd like to have a little yellow cat there. We appreciate that, my cat and I. I've had a lot of different studio cats over the years, and um, this little girl, it's called Pooh Bell, who starred in many videos, is so much nicer than my last studio cat, uh, who now resides at my house because she was hyper. And she broke almost a thousand dollars worth of pottery in a week and a half. Constant climbing and jumping, but she was a sweetheart, so. I couldn't take her back to the shelter, um, so we took her back to the house where she now breaks pots at the house. But she doesn't scare my customers. And her name is Summer because she's a bright yellow cat. And there's a deer just down here. I have to be super careful now because I mean it, it's not fluid wet at the moment but it is really wet it's softer than I mean the surface is just a was a liquid basically painted on and it's, it's firmed up a little bit so that it's got that sort of matte look about it I've got to pull it over towards my hand because it's really just a matter of keep pulling up and don't let any risk of tearing because if the bit of paper drops back down. It's going to be a nice day tomorrow. See, that one dropped and didn't fall all the way in. I was lucky. Because that paper's ripping. It's nice if the stencil holds together. So when you peel it, it pulls the whole thing. But that isn't always going to happen. Some paper that... I, I, I don't like glossy papers to use for this. Um, so it has to be the paper that's newsprint. With some black ink on it and that's about it. Um, the glossy paper just makes too many crease lines but this paper just doesn't have the, the glossy paper where it has this kind of quality of resisting water a little bit so it would be a little easier probably doesn't break down as much but within five minutes of finishing this And this is an earthenware piece. I don't do much earthenware, but um, I have a whole series of pieces I used to make for the American, what was it called? It was called the Museum of American Folk Art at 2 Lincoln Square, New York, New York. And I don't remember the zip, but, um, but I sold to that place for a long time and they used to give me a, a window on Lincoln Square in Manhattan to decorate every year so it was a really good um, exposure and we sold pieces to a lot of people I guess we don't even know most of them but we did sell Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon we sold pieces to from that window all right now it's the time to look and see if you missed anything because if you leave a piece of paper in there, it will burn out in the firing. But the actual, I think there's something just there. Yep, there's the little plug. So I, have, I will show you this when it's painted. Um, I have to paint brown tree trunks on all the trees and I've got to do all the detail in the building. Um, I don't think I'll paint much in the way of, uh, I may throw in a rabbit somewhere occasionally or or doing something, you know, but I'll paint a few animals. I always feel like they make the landscape look a lot nicer. But um, so there you go. This will be a sink. It's a, it's actually 20 inches across at the moment. It will end up about 18 inches across. All right, so um, 19 minutes, not bad. Okay, time to wake up. All right, 
Well, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia, um, 26th or the 25th, I think it's the 26th, today of May. So we'll be able to plant things outside by June 5th. June 5th? England's had stuff for two months. Anyway, it's a late season here, but we don't get cold until late October. So, All right, well, thanks and uh, for visiting with us again. Poobel and I, and we'll uh, see you next time. Bye.